So you and I know the beauty of the internet is that so much information is out there. I mean, if you want to know how to get rich, you want to know how to tie a tie, you want to know how to drop an engine and reinstall a new one, it's all on the internet to find out how, for how much, for free. But when it comes to money, when it comes to wealth, prosperity, happiness, having a fulfilled life, who should you listen to? Well, in this episode, we're going to discuss who King Solomon chose to listen to, to bring his nation to the golden age of their time. So in this episode of the Seven Fear Squad, we'll be breaking down another episode of the Wealth and Wisdom series starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. Despite What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And uh, we are just back from Florida, from Orange County, California. We've had a horrendous last couple weeks of a schedule, so I apologize for not getting back to you last Sunday for this episode of episode number nine, but we'll get back to it right now. But in the meantime, if you feel that our videos, this series of wealth and wisdom series where we're breaking down Proverbs in the Bible for 31 straight weeks, if you feel that any of these videos have provided some value, please click like, please consider hitting subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can help more people gain wealth and wisdom in 2022. All right, so let's get started. So who should you listen to? All these online gurus, all these videos, myself included. Why should you listen to somebody? Well, let's unpack the biblical foundation of who to listen to. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10 through 12, which is a foundational verse for what I believe encapsulates Proverbs chapter 9, and it reads like this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Through, through wisdom your days will be many, and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. So, what is wisdom? So, I asked our good friend Siri, I said, hey Siri, what is wisdom? And Siri responded with, quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Now, I'm probably the first one to make this mistake. Obviously, I made this mistake. Because I thought in my 20s, I knew everything about everything. That's why I share with a lot of my videos. I spent the entire 30s, my whole decade of my 30s, to repay back the mistakes of my 20s. Why? Because I stepped out not in wisdom, but I decided to step out in me, myself, and I, I got this. I figured out along the way. Well, that is considered a way of folly or foolishness, which is defined as lacking good sense. So I further unpacked what definition of foolishness is and folly, and basically it says stupidity. So I said, hey, Siri, what does stupidity mean? Stupidity is lack of intelligence, understanding, or reason. Again, lack of intelligence, understanding, or reason. And further definition is you are reactive. It says reactive. So are you reactive to your situation? I was reactive to my situation. I was reactive to my first marriage and divorce. I was reactive to charging up my credit cards and bankruptcy. I was reactive to becoming a parent. I was reactive to so many things in my life. And I hope for those of you watching this, you learn from my mistakes. Because you can avoid a lot of that and spend the best years of your life, your prime years of your life, getting ahead of your life. So by the time you're in your 40s and 50s, you're so much further ahead. And for those in your 40s, 50s, and 60s and beyond, if you weren't following wisdom for the better part of your life, well, guess what? God says you can follow me now. Why? You don't want to be reactive anymore. You don't want to be reactive anymore to your life. You want to be pro active because that's the opposite of reactive, which is becoming proactive. In other words, you're playing offense. You're not playing defense. So once again, in this book of Proverbs chapter nine, King Solomon also personifies wisdom. Wisdom is a woman and so is folly. In the beginning of chapter nine here, King Solomon here in chapter one describes what wisdom is all about. It says wisdom has built her house. She has set it up in seven pillars, seven pillars. Interesting to God number seven. Okay, so when I'm thinking about wisdom and you put wisdom on top of seven pillars, well, if one of these letters falls down, it can always pick itself back up. Why? Because it's grounded on a foundation. It's grounded upon pillars. If one of these pillars gets challenged, it gets compromised, it can always get rebuilt. It can always get rebuilt by rebuilding your knowledge, experience, and building your judgment. 
However, with that being said, if you just follow your ways, see, here's wisdom and ways, here's your ways. I'll figure it out when I get there. Well, you know what? You know, we'll just kind of wing it, which is the way a lot of our lives decisions are made with money, with relationships, with a lot of aspects in our life, our career, our business. We'll just wing it. But what happens? Well, if you fall or the pillar that you're standing on disappears, what happens to you? You follow along with it. Why? Because you followed your own ways instead of following wisdom's ways. So let's continue reading how King Solomon defines and describes wisdom as this beautiful woman. Okay, let's take a look at it here. Chapter 9, verse 2 through 6, it reads like this. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. Sounds like offense to me. She's proactive, right? She has also sent out her servants, and she calls from the highest points of the city. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, come, eat my food, drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways, and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. This whole chapter reminds me of a recent interview I just did with David Melter, which is coming here pretty soon on the Seven Figure Squad. He's known as one of the greatest sports agents, sports marketing geniuses out there. Early in his life, he says, I want a house, I want these material things, because these things I didn't have. I, I'm a, a group as a, in a Jewish tradition with a, with a single mom with six kids. And by the time he's 33 years old, everything he wanted materially-wise, he got. However, he was empty. And guess what? He lost over $100 million in bankruptcy. Worse, his whole entire life goal was to buy a house for his mother. And that too, because following the ways of foolishness, he lost it all. However, his awakening happened. His encounter with wisdom happened. His encounter with God happened. He woke up. He said, you know what? I need to rebuild this thing. Thank God you've given me the ability to make money, to give me confidence in my skills. And today, he's one of the leading people in America today, considered one of the top coaches in business to help people in their finances, to help people with their business, to help expand the horizons for new athletes coming into the marketplace and getting them endorsement deals and putting money in other people's pockets. That's Dave Meltzer who chose the path of wisdom. Now, I can't tell you how many times that I've been simple I've been foolish. I've been unexperienced. I lack good judgment. You know, one of the things about wisdom is you have to have good judgment. Well, how do you know you have good judgment if you've never made that judgment ever before? And the way you go through good judgment, sadly, is to make a lot of bad judgments. I hate to even admit it. How many times have you said to yourself, why did I buy this? Why did I buy that? If I was to go back and buy this car again, if I was to go back and buy a new house again, if I was going to go back shopping, bet the and buy these clothes, these shoes, whatever the case may be, whatever you've used your money for, how many times have you said to yourself, I will operate and spend my money much differently, much smarter, much wiser? See, that's you building good judgment. Okay, so let's break down, if you want to have more wisdom in your life, if you want to answer wisdom's call, what are the characteristics? Well, let's take a look at this. Wisdom, the characteristics is, you don't correct or rebuke mockers. Okay? You don't correct or rebuke markers. How many times have you started a business? How many times have you invested your money a certain way? How many times have you made a career or business decision or a relationship decision and you did it through wisdom? You did it through not just being, okay, I'm just going to find it my way, but you actually went through counsel. People coming at you. You got your mockers, you got your naysayers, you got your doubters. Well, according to wisdom is you don't correct or rebuke markers. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 9, verse 7 through 8. It reads like this. Whoever corrects a mocker invites insults. Whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse. So there's certain people that you just don't respond to. Now, here's the crazy part. The crazy part is this. Today, the complainers, the mockers, the doubters, the naysayers have the mic. Back in the day, you look at 20, 30 years ago, the people that had the mic, the people that were on TV, the people that were getting all the shine were the winners, were the wise ones. But social media has exposed and given a voice and emboldened the fool, have emboldened the mockers, have emboldened the naysayers. And by the way, to some extent, they're, ne they're actually necessary because the mockers, the doubters, the naysayers, to some extent, the things that they poke fun at you about until you're actually proving them wrong, they are right. They are right to 
poke fun at you. But if you respond to them, that's not following the way of wisdom. Number two, wisdom causes you to instruct those that are wise. Who? You instruct those that are wise. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9. It reads like this. Instruct the wise, and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous, and they will add to their learning. How many times have you been in class? And you see people paying attention, not paying attention. How many times have you taught a class and you felt certain energy from certain people? Not everybody, but certain people in the room. They just gave you energy right back. Well, that's the benefit of the wise instructing the wise. They've kind of identified themselves in the crowd. So if you affirm with me that you don't want to shout down any more fools and mockers and doubters, but you want to instruct those that are wise, please put it in the comment section below this affirmation. I will instruct those that are wise. I will instruct those that are wise. What's another characteristic of wisdom? Their days will be many. Years will be added to the life. You know, search some, some simple things such as don't drink and drive. Well, if that's wisdom, years will be added for life. And what's worse, not only will years be added to your life, but years will be added to other people's lives because you chose to listen to wisdom. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 9, verse 11. It reads like this. For through wisdom, your days will be many, and years will be added to your life. So if you want to have many years with your children, your grandchildren, you want to have many years here on this earth of wealth, prosperity, enjoyment, and happiness, well, consider invoking more wisdom and seeking more wisdom throughout your daily decisions. Okay, so what are the characteristics of foolishness? What are the characteristics of mockers? They are inviting insults. These guys and gals who follow foolishness and mockery incurs abuse. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 9, verse 7 through 8. Let's reread this again. Whoever corrects a mocker invites insults. Whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse. How many times have you gotten into an argument with somebody and the, and the argument started escalating? Started escalating. Started escalating. You know why? Because wisdom causes you to use knowledge. Causes you to use experience. When there's an argument, right, between someone that's wise and someone that's foolish, and the argument starts escalating, it starts getting loud, people are starting to shout down each other, that's just somebody that's wise dragging themselves to the level of foolishness and meeting the fool at their level. And guess what? The fool wins. Why? Because they got more experience being a fool. But at the same time, too, there are ways to address fools. There are ways to address those that mock you, but not in the way they approach you, not in the way they respond to you. You approach them in a way of grace, wisdom, understanding, experience, no judgment, good judgment. There's many people that troll me. There's many people that mock me, but I don't respond to them at their level. Let's take a look at another characteristic of foolishness. They hate those that are wise. Fools and mockers, doubters and naysayers, they hate those that are wise. Let's Let's take a look at another one. Fools and mockers, they suffer alone. At the end of the day, let's say they are trolling everybody. Sure, they get followers. They're trolling everybody. Ooh, they got a bunch of oohs and ahs. They're trolling everybody. They're mocking everybody. They're, they're acting a fool. They get a lot of followers. They're quote unquote influencers. But at the end of the day, who's really following them? They suffer alone. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 9, verse 12. It reads like this. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. Can't tell you how many times people have mocked me in the past. How many times have you seen these celebrities mock each other in the past? And at the end of the day, where are they? Versus the one that says, you know what? Okay, come at me, come at me, come at me. I'm going to operate in wisdom. I'm going to operate in wisdom. I'm operating wisdom. And guess what starts happening? They start elevating, they start growing, they start evolving, they start recreating themselves. Why? Because they follow a godly principle. But those that doubt, those that naysay, those that troll, those that, that shout down, those that despise those that are wise, those folks that are trying to drag people down, guess what? Who are the real friends? Who are they talking to? Who are they associating with? And what is that association really bringing them. So let's read how King Solomon personifies foolishness. It reads like this. Folly is an unruly woman. She is simple and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house on a seat at the highest point in the city, calling out to those who pass by, who go 
straight on their way. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, stolen water is sweet. Food eaten in secret is delicious. But little do they know that the dead are in there, that her guests are deep in the realm of the dead. Woo! So, with that being said, which one is more attractive? I'll tell you what's easier, your way. You know what's easier? Not the way of wisdom. You know what's easier? Now, short-term, shortcuts, foolishness, mockers. That's fun, that's exciting. It's not wise, because the wise causes you to think. Being wise causes you to process. Being wise causes you to recall the areas of your life that you've done this in the past, and now you want to avoid the pain of the past, so therefore you can operate in a path of wisdom, happiness, joy, peace, understanding, prosperity, and wealth. So some questions I'd love for you to ask yourself. Number one, which ways am I really following? Ask yourself, which ways are you following? Are you following your ways or are you following wisdom's ways? How many pillars are you really basing your financial knowledge on? your business knowledge on, your career knowledge on, your relationship knowledge on, how many pillars are you following? Or are the people around you just as broke as you are? Just as desperate or foolishness, operating foolishness just as much as you are? Number two, who do I seek? Who do I align and who do I gain counsel from? Again, in Proverbs, King Solomon says, when there's many counselors, plans succeed. And number three, who? What do I have to trust? Who, what do I have to trust and more importantly, love? Because if you want a better life and you look at what King Solomon is talking about, the path of wisdom is never easier. What's easier is the foolish way. That's the seductive thing about it. What's easier is the, the quick way, the shortcut way. But the path of wisdom, the path of correction and accountability and discipline that path is not a path a lot of people want to follow. However, according to King Solomon, who's regarded and known as the wisest and richest king who ever lived, says, please, I implore you, he's talking to his sons, his children, in this entire book of Proverbs, instructions, speeches, but please, wear wisdom around your neck. Don't let yourself leave the house without wisdom covering your heart and your spirit. So before I let you go, please check out this video right here, which is the last episode of this Wealth and Wisdom series. And number two here, please check out this video, how the Bible made me a millionaire and how it can make you a millionaire too as well because God don't want you broke. That being said, let me know your thoughts, your questions, your feedback. You agree with me, you don't agree with me, please put it in the comment section below. What's been your biggest takeaway so far? So if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, I'm your money smart guy from Dallas, Texas, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.